Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Freaking hell, my welcome along to the vlog. I tell you what, it's Monday, it's February the 2nd, no, 7th, 7th of February 2nd, and we're in the unit, and uh, ignore my little bit of breakfast there, and we're down this morning because on Sunday I spent all day watching YouTube videos and I never came down to set the timer to turn on the HRT for today's brew day. So today we're going to be making some beer. What's it going to be? Bacon gesture, I believe. So yeah, usual stuff. Uh, but there hasn't been a, a lot of vlogs throughout January. And that's because, well, I'll give you my excuses now. You know, get them out of the way, so to speak. So... We didn't need a lot of beer at the start of January because Christmas was a little bit of a letdown in terms of trade. And uh, we probably did around 60, 40 to 60% of what we'd have had to do. Therefore, we're going to have to really try and pull it back a little bit in January, February, which is very difficult because they're usually the months of the year where we make a loss. So, I didn't need to brew any beer and uh, we just used what stock we had built up before Christmas which was a lot by the way a heck of a lot in fact I'll show you the empties in a minute um, so I thought well I'm not gonna start brewing again until second week in January perhaps in fact I'd even written it on this little brew plan look that was my brew plan the 10th of January is when I was meant to start and then the following week like we didn't need to start on the 10th so I pushed it back another week and then uh, the kids brought COVID home from school into the household, so we had to do the compulsory self-isolation. Nobody was particularly ill. Gemma suffered probably the worst out of all of us and Abigail, but nothing more than a headache and a cough. I was perfectly fine. I had a couple of sweaty nights. And one funny thing, though, was it set off um, the bursitis, which is a chronic uh, condition I have in my knee. But thankfully... Our good friend Mr. Bailey came to the rescue and uh, he prescribed me some medication, shall we say. Anyway, that kind of got me through that little bit, but it put me out of action in terms of doing anything physical because the bursitis ran on a good week or two longer than the actual um, positive COVID tests. So when the knee is in poor condition, there's very, very little I can do in terms of physical work because if you aggravate it anymore, it's one of those things that just gets worse and worse. And the last time I had a really bad flare up was when uh, Gemma and I went to Edinburgh with uh, Tom and Abby, new to homebrew. Tom, you remember that guy, won't you? And uh, yeah, he drove us all the way up to Edinburgh and I spent two or three days on that weekend limping around the city until miraculously one evening it wore off a touch and uh, we enjoyed the last day or so without them having to wait for me to catch them up all the time so it's been a while and I'm very careful you'll notice dotted around the unit you'll probably not see any today uh, there's one various kneeling pads and such to prevent a flare-up of that happening again anyway that's the boring stuff out of the way. That's one of the reasons why we've not made any videos and not made any beer, because I've been out of action in that respect. And I could have done a few talk to camera videos and stuff like that, but yeah, to be honest, I just enjoyed the time off. Is it a crime? Certainly not. But we're back this week with a bang in February. I was in last week, one, two, three, four, five tanks of beer full. These have actually fermented out really nicely. We've done a mild, We've got a mild over here, and that was brewed on the 3rd of Feb, and it's finished. It's ready for a cold crash. That'll be on the bar next week. So if you want to brew a fast beer, that's it. Your Michael Fast Beer is a mild. Uh, so I'm going to let this water heat up today. We'll pull out the ingredients for our brew, 
And then I'm going to take the dogs for a walk, seeing as it's early. This water won't be hot until 9 o'clock-ish. So I've got plenty of time to go out and uh, throw a ball or two for Chance and Reggie. So I think I'm going to do that now. It probably still won't be hot enough when I come back either, so I'll print off the recipe and get the grain out then. And uh, then a bit more, a bit more tidying up and housekeeping, I think. We've got all this stuff out in here. I can talk about this for a moment, actually. So, last week, during the brew day, we had an incident, two incidents, seemingly unrelated, yet nevertheless, having similar consequences. Incident one was, we had an, an SSR, a solid state relay, let the smoke out, as you can see there. I did pull it apart on the vice, and I think I've thrown... The other half away it's probably in a bin around here somewhere and it's long gone but it was a croydon solid state relay so not not a cheap one oh there's some bits of it look well, where to look inside and uh yeah i don't know why it decided to give up the ghost but nevertheless it did um it's rated for 50 amps as you can see on there and it was only switching 19 so switching 19 amps uh, normally I have it on about a 50% duty cycle over an 8 second cycle time so you know 4 seconds on 4 seconds off kind of thing and it's been fine there's two more in there of this exact design the heat sinks don't get much above 70 degrees there's ventilation inside, or air circulation inside the control panel, and this one just decided to uh, to poo the bed. So, there we go. So, I've got in touch with um, our new associate, uh, Andy from Four Priests Brewing, which I'm sure everybody's following by now. And this is the industry he works in, so he's giving me some advice. He said these are actually rock solid, uh, a good brand. So, yeah, it's one of those mysteries, isn't it? It might have just been a duff. Who knows? But it's lasted me this long. So, at the moment, I've got a cheap Chinese uh, 125 amp three phase solid state really in there, actually. Only thing I'm worried about is the low side switching, whether it's going to completely turn off or not. What kind of leakage current there'll be on that. But I think we'll be fine. And eventually, I will replace it with something a little bit more. With a little bit more substance so this is why we've got all this tackle out here and then um off the back of that another incident which i can't see how the two are related because they were on se separate phases but this 32 amp plug here was in bk it was one at the time, but I've switched them over now. Uh, BK1. And, uh, yeah, this wasn't the phase... Because they're all on separate cables in, look. They're all on separate three phases in. So it was a separate circuit. But this one decided to have a bad connection. And we caught it. It was still working, but the cable was just warm. So, obviously, when the other... Um, element or the solid state relay, f relay f failed we noticed that the, vo the, the current had dropped down from 38 to 19 amps so I knew one of them was wrong I was touching this wire here and it was red hot well not red hot it was warm to the touch so I pulled it out and then we had zero amps which enabled me to figure out that that side was still working even though it had, you know, got a bit toasty in there. So, two seemingly unrelated incidents. But, nevertheless, it's made me decide to upgrade slightly. Now, there's no neutral return path on these, which is fine. But, should a phase 
conk out, I believe that neutral will be there to carry the returning phase back to the board. So we're going to reinstate a neutral phase just in case on all of these, even though they're not wired up for that configuration, they're in a delta. And uh, so we'll put them into a Y. Is that right? I'll do some investigation instead of saying to you what I'm going to do at 7 o'clock in the morning. But either way, we're just going to reinstate all the cables and uh, upgrade, upgrade all this. So, new boxes for the wall, because one or two of these are old. This one's the same as this, actually, so we'll probably keep that middle one in. But we're going to change these two boxes out after I finish brewing this week. We're going to change out the sockets on the wall. And we're going to change out the plug and um, leads as well. So the leads on the uh, plugs at the moment are armoured cable. And we're going to change them to these slightly better. I like these actually. Um, this is 2.5mm square 5 core going into this. The stuff that's running at the minute is 1.5mm 4 core. So you see the problem that we've got there. And one of those cores is bringing back the CPC, the circuit protection conductor, so or the earth to you and me. And then we've got the same thing going on with the sockets. 2.5mm, 5 core going into the control panel, solid state relays. We won't be switching the neutral, we won't be switching the earth. The neutral and earth will run straight through back to the distribution board. We'll be switching the three phases through the solid state relays and through the isolators. Does that make sense? I think it absolutely does. So there we go. That is an 11 minute video telling you what I've been up to and why the whole place is a freaking mess. Do we split the videos into two today or do I just keep on filming? Well, I'll keep on filming and uh, we'll pick up later on when we are a little bit further into the brew day but fear not there won't be any electrical uh, wizardry today simply because we're just going to brew all these beers first and tidy the place up before we start to change any of the electrics out that will be for another day so me being me when I put the camera down then, I thought immediately, I'm going to have to just have a quick look online about star and delta configuration of these heating elements. So if they're in a star configuration, then the neutral is not required, but should you get a failure on one phase, then it will prevent over voltage protection on the remaining two phases. But if it's in a delta connection, it would make no difference. So I do think these are wired up in a delta configuration. That means they won't need a neutral at this end. But I will introduce the neutral into the housing. And then if we change the configuration at any time in the future, we have a neutral conductor running the length of the cable. Then if we use these sockets for anything other than the elements we have a neutral conductor in there if we plug something in that's got a wire configuration on for instance because in the past when it's been cold in here I have we've got a three phase heater that we use for a marquee up on the mezzanine not the marquee is not up on the mezzanine the three phase heater is the marquee goes up in the beer garden and we put the heater in the marquee anyway when it's been cold in here sometimes and we've been doing something that's not labour intensive like canning I've put the three phase heater element on and I've run it through the control panel. So I suppose having that versatility and having all phases and conductors connected, it makes more sense now. Then I can make sure we've got three phase neutral and earth, three phase neutral and earth, and then all the way across to the distribution board, three phase neutral and earth, and then regardless of the configuration of any loads that we plug into the control board it will work as intended there we go it just worried me a little bit I was talking about it and I thought well it's far too early in the morning to be discussing these uh, 
electrical configurations so if you know any better let me know but I think um, I think I'm on the right track now talking of product that we've got through during Christmas okay you remember back in December of last year this area was almost devoid of casks it maybe had a little stack of these ones here which are the bogget hole ones that we use in emergency excuse me when we need uh, some more and there are about there were about 12 on there so everything that you see here is what's come back in since December so that pile there that pile there this pile here these are all the kegs and then this stack here so quite a lot of beer but I would have been hoping we'd have had to process this lot in January rather than February but there we go and remember we don't wholesale any of our product all of it goes through the pub apart from a few can lines uh, so it's not too bad for a little small venue is it I suppose but still not as good as it can be anyway I'm gonna go and walk the dogs and we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some brewing tidy this shit up all right doggos <whistles> so this place here is called Cruxford Waters and it used to be absolutely gorgeous we've come here as kids as you can see rope swings and whatever else there but recently it's become a dumping ground which is a real shame there's a scrap wood processing facility been built on the back now they're not terrible polluters although they haven't done anything to increase the beautiful aspects of the place but what we do have is a lot of chavs and knobs who come along in four by fours and just thrap through the ford unfortunately tearing it up both sides and they've been known which is why those rocks are there to drive down the river itself and completely wreck it so what was a nice tranquil area of beauty for you to come and bring your children to paddle in the river during the summer has been wrecked by selfish mindless dickheads who just want to trash the environment that they live in this is an example of it look this is motorbikes and 4x4s quads and uh, yeah they just don't care really as long as they're having their fun they're not bothered all these puddles here are a result of uh, 4x4 damage there's no need for them to be coming down here apart from simply off-roading anyway rant over let's enjoy the walk doggos <laughs> Thank you. 
is. Reggie looks like he could do another five miles and chance. You spent, bud. Yeah. See you later then. Let's go home. We're in. Quarter past nine. We're only up to 70 degrees. So that gives me time enough to print out the recipe sheet, weigh out the grist, and get it all in the mash tun, ready to crack on. There's literally no better smell in a morning than the mash. It is quite enticing. It makes you want to get a spoon and just eat it like porridge. Hey, we've got some porridge oats, haven't we, Jem? I might actually have some porridge then for breakfast. Why not? We do indeed have some oats. So, they're in the microwave. And then I've got some, well, some strawberry jam. But it's got some probiotics growing on it, so I think we'll just scoop them off. And we'll use it anyway. Can't be that bad. There we go. I'm sowing my wild oats. I'm sure that jam will break down in a minute. In the heat of the moment. But yes. You know, I've not had porridge all year. Anyway, we'll let that cool for a second. Sorry, madam. <laughs> so the mash is in. It's at the required temperature. So let's put the lid on. 66.2 today. Aiming for 66. And it is 6 degrees in here. So I kind of don't mind having, you know, as I say, keep a little two for me. So there we go. Just topping up the... HLT because it's undersized. That's done. It's probably where is the uh, level on that? Oh yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's about 470. We normally go 450. And then we want to set a mash timer. There we go. 45 minutes. Actually, we want 50 minutes because we're already five minutes in. That'll do us. Right, porridge. Hey, delivery today. We're pleased to announce that as of, what is it, 7th of Feb? I can't remember now. We are now stocking uh, Chris's kombucha from Raw Culture. So uh, these are going to retail at three and a half quid a can of. Oh, come on, Chris, we'd like to drive the wholesale price of that down a little bit, mate. Discount next time, eh, pal? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these are going to go on the bar as an alcohol-free option for us. So, at the moment, we've got them in the fridge. We'll see how they go. Obviously, it's going to take a week or two for people to get familiar with these new brands. I'll just face that up there. So, we've got the original... The Hopical Punch, Lemon Drop, and one of my favourites, the Mangosaurus. So, get your booch on at rawculture.co.uk. Freaking right, boys. Silence in the brewery. End of the day, pretty much. The whirlpool's happening. Or the hop stand after the whirlpool, if you like. Up at uh, 80 degrees. And we're just waiting for another 10 minutes for that to be complete. We've got our tilt in some acid ready to go into the tank. We've got the yeast. I've been buying 10 kilogram blocks of US05. It's extremely cost effective. And repackaging them into 250 gram pouches it works an absolute treat in fact as you can see that is our yeast bank and that is all full of O5s with a little bit of verdant and sanders whatever else up top 
and then down at the bottom we've got our enzymes and some milk for porridge of course so I've just been up here actually and uh, I've just pulled off <laughs> sailor um, a sample of the mild I should have done it on camera but everything was whirling around and uh, yeah I had a taste of it and I think it's gonna be spot on it's nice it's got a little bit of a caramel note to it but other than that it's very rounded a little bit green but we'll see we'll hold out before we do a review on it I think it's gonna be a very good beer well I love it when a plant comes together boys and girls so that's that another one bites the dust so I'm just gonna walk into the workshop where it's a little bit quieter away from the pumpage yes the pumpage so I've had a little bit of a tidy up in here well, that's it for the day that's it I'm off home that's exactly where I'm gonna go now I'm not gonna pass go and I'm not gonna collect 200 pounds but I would appreciate it if you'd leave a comment or something down below and do all the usual things like subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon we're going to do a few more videos this spring on the build up if you live on the build up to springtime we're going to do a lot more New England IPAs and don't forget the secret city New England IPA is on the website now it's all gone on keg it's all gone that was on keg in the pub it's gone if you want to get some you've got to go over to harrisonbrew.com forward slash shop and that's where you'll find it and the next version of the secret city is going to include Idaho 7 hops yes you don't want to miss out on that one do you boys and girls so thanks for watching and we'll see you maybe on tomorrow's instalment of the vlog. Cheers.